Okay, I've got um, Lulani and Nico Martin. I bought. Aloha, Secretary. As the Queen who filed her official protest at the State Department in 1897, she said no. We say no. And, and that also gives a direction. It's an unanswered letter from her. We'd like to sing in a song in our tradition. We have songs in Mele, Laulani. <laughs> Red ribbons dangling from her hair. Red ribbons, I see them everywhere. Red ribbons, won't you take? above Moananui, a great ocean. We're traveling right now on the plane to San Francisco. We just left our beloved Hawaii a few hours ago and we're almost to San Francisco. So I guess this is the first video cast of our Red Ribbons journey. Diko is taking a walk because this got a little intense for him so we'll definitely be making more casts but right now um, the reason it was kind of intense is because we were just reading out of this book here this is Hawaii's story by Queen Liliuo Kalani and I'd like to read a little bit out of this book so, right now we're recreating the Queen's journey and this part of the story, this is chapter, forty-nine, chapter 49 which is called A Change of Scene to Forget Sorrow. And this is about when the queen left on her red ribbons journey, what we call the red ribbons journey, because it ended with her, well, it didn't end, but it um, culminated with her filing of her protest against annexation at Washington, D.C. And when she's leaving, she had just been released from prison not too long ago and had had clearance to travel if she needed to and it's very interesting because throughout this section she talks about the great difficulties that she encountered in terms of people who were working against her and actually tried to harm her while she was making this journey um, which everyone kind of knew was a journey of protest as well as respite but the way that she frames it is doesn't necessarily tell that so here's what she writes about the beginning of that journey so she says Calling to mind my many acquaintances in San Francisco and remembering the relatives of my husband there and across the bay in Oakland, I decided to sail for that city and at once quietly began my preparations. She went to go visit President Dole and she says, as I entered, he rose from his seat, approached me at once and extended his hand, which I took. Asking us to be seated, he inquired of me to what he was indebted for the honor of this early visit. I informed him of my intention to take a trip to San Francisco. 
he inquired if I intended to go further on, to which I replied, I would probably visit my relations in the city of Boston and perhaps might cross the Atlantic to call on my niece, the Princess Kaiulani in England. At this, Mr. Dole rose and called to his wife, who entered immediately and greeted me with a pleasant smile. In the course of an agreeable conversation, they expressed their great anxiety and solicitude for me that I was undertaking such a journey in the depth of winter. I got a turn the page. <clears throat> the climate of Boston, they said, was one of great severity, especially this was true in its effect upon strangers. And they warned me to prepare myself most carefully against the dangers of a winter there. Thanking them for my for their kind interest, I bade them goodbye. But the president very gallantly escorted me to my carriage and of his own accord proposed to send from the foreign office passports for myself and those of my party. He then politely bowed an adieu as the carriages were driven out of his yard, and thus we parted. She then talks quite a bit about those passports and about how they basically used her name to try to legitimize the foreign government, um, which she strongly opposed. <clears throat> and um, Then she talks about her departure. She left on board the, the steamship. And she says, um, Honorable Samuel, Samuel Parker came on board the steamship and asked in astonishment where I was going. I gave him a like answer to that given to the president and Mrs. Dole, and there, then the steamer proceeded on her way out of the harbor. The usual farewells of waving handkerchiefs and the hats signalized our departure, and then, for the first time in years, I drew a long breath of freedom. For what was there worthy in that sacred name under the circumstances in which I had lived on shore? not knowing but that every word, every look, every act of mine was being noted down by spies to be reported somewhere to my hurt. <clears throat> okay, so we'll leave it at that much for right now. But that's our story of Queen Lili Okalani's journey and that's the journey that we are following right now. We're doing things a little differently. We're not traveling by steamer. We're on an airplane. And the course that we're taking is a little bit different because we're following the spirit of her journey, which changed according to what was happening at the time. And so we're doing that as well. This has been pretty intense getting ready to leave for us and we love all of you and are thinking about you. Our next stop is going to be in the San Francisco Bay Area from which we will leave on the train to go to New York City to greet the Hokulea. So please follow along and We'll continue with the Queen story as well. Mahalo.
Tego, and welcome to Let's Talk. This is John Kane, and I, as always, I'm just really, really happy to be here. In hour two, I've got uh, some folks joining me from Hawaii. I've got uh, Liko Martin and Lulani uh, uh, Teal, who will be joining us. They are a part of um, uh, what what they call the Red, Red Ribbon Tour. And what the Red Ribbon Tour is, it is like the the retracing of Queen Lilio Kalani's uh, footsteps when she was carrying the petition from the Hawaiian Islands to the United States in protest of the uh, uh, what was being attempted at the time an annexation of uh, Hawaii. What she had was a petition signed by the vast majority of Hawaiian people opposing what uh, what was being essentially a coup by a handful of white guys trying to take over Hawaii and. Um, when when Lilo Kalani made that trip and came into the West Coast in San Francisco. Okay, so here we are on the train. We're about to depart the San Francisco Bay Area. The last time we read was from Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen, and we were reading about her departure from Honolulu coming to San Francisco. Now, this is about her departure from San Francisco heading east, and this was... Uh, published in the the San Francisco Call newspaper at that time. What was the date was on that? A large newspaper at that time. Uh, it was uh, the 24th of September in 1896. Mm-hmm. So it took her a while. Uh, it to took get, her a while to yeah. go out mm-hmm. to get to get yeah. safely to Washington yeah. D.C. She, she had been there. Oh, looks like we're just taking off. Here we go. So. It says, Liuokalani to leave. Hawaii's ex queen to start tomorrow en route for Wellington to oppose annexation. Queen Liuokalani, who arrived here over a fortnight ago and has been staying quietly at the California Hotel, will leave here tomorrow evening on the Central Overland train for Chicago, whence she will immediately resume her journey to Washington, D.C. She will go accompanied only by her two lady servants and managers of her household and minor affairs and Mrs. Helulehe, who have been her constant companions ever since she left Honolulu last October. Hawaii's ex-queen is coming east to be ready to resume her fight against annexation as soon as Congress shall again convene. Princess Ka'iulani, aspirant to the Hawaiian throne and niece of Lili'uokalani, will sail from Liverpool for New York on October. Her purpose is to visit Honolulu and create a favorable impression. Whether or not she will confer with her aunt on her way here, Queen Liliuokalani was not able yes, yesterday to tell. An impression is current, however, that aside from cordial relations, um, something about the political relations, basically they're, they're um, they're talking about cordial relations, but really it's about the political relationships. <clears throat> so essentially you get the idea that the people of San Francisco were well aware, despite all the cordiality and all of the um, pretense that was going on um, by the government, basically, that Lili Okalani was very much dedicated to fighting annexation all the way, and she never gave up that fight, ever. Here we are in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is San Francisco Bay over here, in the home of the Olone people, the Kanakahui. I do recognize a bridge up there, is the Vallejo 
um, bridge and <clears throat> the area that I'm trying to uh, show over there is an area called Sogorate and a few years ago the people from this area the Olone and uh, many others had an encampment there's the there's the bridge the Vallejo bridge and they had an encampment to protect the burial areas and many other um, sacred sites at that area from development in the name of recreation you know we see the same thing in Hawaii a lot where in the name of people being able to access and love nature a lot of the actual resources that are there the actual um, the actual treasure people. of the land and the people are often destroyed and so that was what was happening over there and I was able to visit at the end of that encampment which was somewhere right around here very close to here and one of the things that was most noticeable to me was that when we went down to the ocean down to the bay here and I heard this noise and looked across the bay and there right across that bay and I don't know if you can see it from here but was CNH sugar and you know I looked at the encampment and the people who had to you know the people of the land here who had to encamp there to put themselves at risk in order to protect their sacred aina and I could see that this this plant here the the CNH sugar plant here you see it here it comes CNH pure cane sugar CNH is California and Hawaii by the way and those are the sugar planters that invaded Iolani Palace and um, you know basically stole our kingdom at gunpoint and here they are in the lands here and they're completely destroying this place and there's you can't quite see it but there's a lot of smoke and pollution and so Sogorate is right there across the bay and we just like to really honor those people over there who encamped and protected Sogorate you know and there were there we are looking at the same oppressors CNH California and Hawaii you know it's the same struggle everywhere so when when we say we don't want federal recognition we're not saying anything about um, our cousins over here who are doing awesome work protecting their lands with their bodies, not with any federal instrument, but with their bodies and with their hearts and souls. And so, you know, as we travel across this huge continent, we're really honoring them too. Miles after miles of rich country went by as we gazed from the windows of the moving train. And all this vast extent of territory which we traversed belonged to the United States. And there were many other routes from the Pacific to the Atlantic with an equally boundless panorama. Here were thousands of acres of uncultivated 
uninhabited but rich and fertile lands, soil capable of producing anything which grows, plenty of water, and yet this great and powerful nation must go across 2,000 miles of sea and take from the poor Hawaiians their little spots in the broad Pacific, must covet our islands of Hawaii and extinguish the nationality of my poor people, many of whom have now not a foot of land which can be called their own. And for what? in order that another race problem shall be injected into the social and political perplexities with which the United States in the great experiment of popular government is already struggling. struggling. In order that a novel and inconsistent foreign and colonial policy shall be grafted upon its hitherto impregnable diplomacy or in order that a friendly and generous yet proud-spirited and sensitive race, a race admittedly capable and worthy of receiving the best opportunities for material and moral progress, shall be crushed under the weight of a social order and prejudice with which even another century of preparation would hardly fit it to cope.
beginning <coughs> island of the universe, and we are all connected by water. And because of that, it's not about the individual, it's about the whole. As Buckminster said it, he described us in his last book, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. He said that we descended from the stars and the Bakali, and that we are at all incubated and we are an omni advantage in society. Culture is omni advantage. If I catch all the the, the fish, the big pile, 10,000 pounds of akule. The honor for me to catch it comes to me, of course, but the spoil will be done. And you never take more than you need to share. This is the message of the mission. Okulea sails under the banner, the theme of Malama Honua. Malama to take care, keep the fire burning. Honua, our oh, place where we live. So, this is the first time that it comes out now. So. safely in the dock. Yeah, in New York City. Here we are. She told her people standing down would mean their survival. Climbing down from her throne Aloha Oi to the choir Took a train across America to lay our store.